Yeah, normally um, in a company's drug and alcohol policy, um, they will indicate that any failure to comply with the drug and alcohol testing process uh, would be treated as a failure. Um, the only slight caveat to that would be that if there are certain mitigating factors which can be upheld, um, then, you know, and you can explain why you've not um, complied with the drug and alcohol test, um, then it may not be treated as failure, but um, they generally, um, if you don't comply, then yeah, it is classed as a failure. So with urine tests, um, regards to either trying to sneak somebody else's sample or one that you've prepared earlier, um, there's a couple of sort of um, a couple of things that we do uh, to safeguard against this. Um, one of them is that we do ask all donors to empty their pockets um, take off any coats uh, and those kind of things, which normally would uh, sort of highlight if they are trying to take anything into the testing area. Um, the main one, though, is the temperature strip. Um, basically, anything that is not um, at, at the required uh, temperature, which is the body temperature, it will be flagged um, and it will fail the um, integrity checks. It is difficult to keep any um, fluid at body temperature once it's ex exited the body. Um, normally, it takes less than a minute or so um, once the fluid is excreted out the body for it to um, to lose temperature very quickly. So it is very highly unlikely um, that that can happen. No, in terms of um, any sort of passive inhalation or accidental consumption of drugs, um, effectively with the lab confirmation, um, all labs work for certain cutoff levels um, of, of drug in the system and effectively they are set um, to eliminate that eventuality. So if you are, if you do fail for uh, THC or, or cannabis, um, it is due to direct consumption rather than any passive inhalation. No. Um, so the reason reason being is that um, although we do ask that um, that anyone that's providing a breath sample um, is what's called nil by mouth 15 minutes prior to the test, um, there are occasions where people try to um, either, you know, uh, indirectly or directly um, influence the result by consuming something, whether that's a mouth spray or mouthwash. Um, what will happen in these circumstances is that any reading that is provided that goes above the uh, above zero effectively in terms of breath alcohol content, um, we will wait for 20 minutes before we take a second um, sample. Um, again, and the reason for this is to ensure that um, it eliminates the chances of people trying to influence the result with, with mouth washes or mouth sprays um, and ensures that we have a sample that is nil by mouth 